actually walk this already and I'm just running video now because I'm heading in the right alignment from north to south it's really not a bad little ascent it doesn't take very long it isn't too horribly steep if you're actually in shape, which I'm not, I imagine it would hardly put a dent in you. But as an aging wheeze bag, I can assure you it was challenging. <laughs> so aging wheeze bags should beware. And this is generally a lot of up and down terrain. The areas that we'll see as I move forward have little eskers and there's another hill out there and so forth. It's very different from the serene, perfect for cross-country skiing, gentle run I did a little while ago in South Borough. I had forgotten that Mass Audubon really closes shop on Monday and I didn't think to bring water. I'm ever an improvident idiot. But uh, I noticed some people around the back of Mass Audubon and asked them for a couple gulps from the hose. They graciously assented. There's a lot of these sort of water retention, diversion, step things to try to slow down erosion. And they're one of the interesting little features of it section of the trail. It's relatively straightforward. Not a lot of switchbacks or turns. alarm. Deadfall, I think they're called. Mm -hmm. 
Sardon has these utterly charming and smart trail markers everywhere to make sense of their trail grids. And we're also on the Warner Trail. <laughs> they don't want you skiing. That's what I love about Mass Audubon. It's Audubon, get it? It's about nature, living things. So their mission is going to be different from things like the Department of Conservation Resources or whatever, who have to make a motley crew of taxpayers happy with their ability to do whatever outdoors stick they have. Mass Audubon cannot care. It's about the critters. And for some reason, when I'm in these places, there's always, it seems, a much higher density of birds and everything else than in other spots. This is the exclosure, they call it. It's an effort to demark an area that's kind of, it's a deer-free zone. And they want to see what the heck happens when you keep a deer out of a little area. <laughs> it's kind of cool. From what I can tell, there's a relatively robust mix of natives and invasive species. Mo there's a, the natives aren't doing too bad. You tend to run into the greatest number of invasives, whether it's Japanese knotweed or poison ivy or what have you. In the disturbed areas at the fringes of places like this, once you get deep into them, it's basically hasn't been disturbed much in a couple hundred years. Kind of a dry slope oak forest with its share of colorful things. to Walpole and then over northward till you find yourself staring at the Atlantic in Plum Island. And this will take you to Easton in the near term, but with a little perseverance and slogging for a couple days, you'll be staring at the Atlantic in Duxbury. here voices from the human 
creature. So we must be getting close to the trailhead near the sanctuary headquarters, which is a, another marvel of ecotech adoption. Major solar panel banks on the roof. So on. They've, Massachusetts Audubon has been retrofitting all of its sanctuary buildings and have a useful YouTube series on it. <laughs> There's another one of those funny little structures people make for the heck of it. gray squirrel on the lamb. You don't like me. We're coming up to a cool boardwalk. Mr. Squirrel, sorry to disturb you. Really, I have no interest in what you're up to. I don't like squirrel time. This one here's the muffled, fluffy sound of a motor in the woods. And we come upon the boardwalk, one of several we'll be seeing. 